for the millions of Christians, I think, who look at Trump and know that he's a problem. I wrote it to help free Christians from this false belief that a lot of us have that Jesus wants us to vote for a man who so clearly represents the opposite of what we're called to be in the world. Donald Trump appeals to the worst nature of Americans, and that's true for his Christian supporters too. Christian support for Trump is bad for the nation, but it's worse for Christians. It's corrosive to our souls to make excuses for a man like Trump. Now, the biggest problem, in my view, is, is not the people who've like gone all in on Trump and, and actually believe him, believe some of his conspiracy theories, or they hang on his every word. The biggest problem is the people who know Trump for who he is, but tell themselves every day that you know his opposition is so much worse that they have to vote for him. And I just don't accept that argument for a very important reason, which is the only reason that Trump won the primaries this year is that evangelical Christians supported him over every other Republican candidate. We've got a deep brokenness in the church, and we don't get to just shift the focus off of our own complicity in this. We foisted Trump onto a nation who doesn't want him by our participation in the primaries. So this book goes into all of that in light of scripture. And I try to get at a better way for us to approach our political involvement. If you're like me, over the past eight years, you've probably watched people that you love and respect just turn darker in their outlook. In order to justify their support for Trump, as he continues his own nosedive into like spiritual oblivion, they're forcing themselves to see the other side in an even worse light. And I just think it's not good for us to have to keep seeing our neighbors in the worst possible way, just so we can justify supporting our guy. Listening to Trump is bad for our soul. Voting for him is deadly to our conscience. And this book is my best attempt to explain why using scripture. So this is going to be a close election, but I don't think it should be. We're, we're in a strange place in this country. Donald Trump stands a decent chance of winning the election for one reason, and one reason only, because conservative Christians looked at him with all of his obvious faults and said, that guy, we like that guy. If it weren't for conservative Christians, Trump would be nothing. And what you just seen there was a retired pastor, uh, Pat, where he's got the book there, a, a Christian case against uh, Donald Trump and why he needs to be rejected. And on my particular channel here, we're going to continue on with why Christians should reject Donald Trump. And, you know, and before we talked about Alan Parr and and this uh, uh Right here, as you see, there's up in the Christian uh, circles there where they're talking about why you should stick with the Republican Party over the Democrat Party. And I said, you know, a lot of folks mean well and things. And we talked about how there is no more Republican Party. The Republican Party was done with when MAGA took over. And so we have a whole different thing going on. But this video right here is going to we talked about the two questions. And I want you to stay with me on this video because it came to me. I've got the notes, I've got, I got everything in here that I wanted to bring, but I'm not gonna go over everything. But I have two things that I wanna hit the point on in this video, and I believe it's gonna really have you think, and some of you may be very uncomfortable and restless when I'm done with that. Because as he's talking about, you know what's Trump? As we know, he wants us to forget this. They want you to forget about January 6th. They want you to forget that Donald Trump lost the election and knew it on election night. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. Frankly, we did win. We beat us by a whisker. They want you to forget any illegal conspiracy against the United States of America and every American voter. They want you to forget when they lost in court that they used violence at the Capitol. But we haven't forgotten, and we won't. 
Trump and his associates are amping it up again, planting the seeds that will lead to the same violence and chaos. It's hard to say what you're going to do and what you're not. It's not over on election day. It's over on inauguration day. My answer is always conditional. The only way they're going to win, in my opinion, is if they cheat. Prosecute people that cheat. They cheat. Do you understand that, you crooked people? But Senator, will you accept the election? Results? Hillary Clinton said he will use constitutional processes to challenge issues. Assaults on police officers. Threats to poll workers. 200,000 volunteers to be poll watchers. Attacks on our institutions. In 2021, they failed to overturn the election. January 6th was a trial run. They've learned lessons, put new allies in vital positions. It's going to take a civil war to save the country. If Kamala wins, Trump will make sure it's painful for America, but not nearly as painful if he won. There's a fight ahead either way. We can't forget that the man tried to overthrow our government. We can't forget that he's a convicted felon. We can't forget about his sexual assault. We can't forget all of that. But for some reason, people have. But the argument that I want to say for Christians, that as some of them in the thumbnail and men and many others, leaders, I'm talking about Christian leaders, pastors, millions of other Christian, conservative Christians and things. First off, the question is, do you believe the big lie that the election was stolen? And just like the pastor, uh, uh, Pat right there, the former pastor there, talked about did, in the uh, primaries. Who did you support in the primaries for those of you that vote? Because you had choices. But for some reason, you said, you know what? Despite everything I know. Now, you get a pass from 2016. You, everyone gets a pass that first time around because people wanted something different, some type of change, just to see. But after knowing everything you knew, everything that has been out, every single thing, and you decide to come back in the year 2024 and end up voting again to say, this is the man that I want to represent me as a Christian and as to represent the nation and things, that's a big problem. And if any of these Christian YouTubers and Christian leaders in that if they've done answered yes to either one of these questions, it's the big problem. And it's going, and I'm getting ready to show you why it's such a big problem. Now, as I go in here, as back to the chart, you know, the chart talked about uh, the family, religious freedom, you know, the school choice. School choice is a big issue. We know that, I mean, that's an argument in itself, taking taxpayer dollars and funding of a religious school all of this thing, and then where they have on here conservative judges, liberal judges, and things. No, you want a judge that follows the law. So, I mean, all of this is stuff that's argumentative, that can be argumentative. You know, we can argue about, but you can't argue about it if you don't have a functioning democracy that we supposed to have that this MAGA movement is trying to take over and destroy. And that's the problem. So any, any of these evangelicals and people that continue to stand by this knowing that Trump tried to thwart our democracy and continues to do so, is they're under a strong delusion and totally deceived. And this is what I believe. As you listen to this lady right here that is totally deceived in Arizona, let's listen. I do believe that there was election fraud in 2020. I know there was in 2020 and 2022. And we're new to Arizona in the last couple of years. And one of my thoughts with when all of the deception was going on was, man, I wouldn't want to live in Maricopa County. And here I am. Uh, God has a sense of humor. And all I know is... Um, I do believe that there was fraud in 2022. I don't believe Katie Hobbs is our rightful governor. Um, you know, all of this has to be uncovered. And you hear her talking? You see that? Believe the governor's not an official governor, Katie Hobbs. They got, uh, uh, you know, the lady, I can't even think of her daggone name, that's running, that's trying to, that lost to her. And then um, um, she's running for the Senate now and continuing it's the lies, the chaos, and all of this disillusion and things. This is what's in society. So that brings me to my point. Let me see here. This is the point that I want you guys to know. Because I don't want this video to be long because we got many more videos to go to talk about some things that I want to really share that I believe that is, you know, 
uh, God sent that he, as I was just writing these things down. I have a lot of things written down here. And what I have is in here, you know, you know, here in the States, we have a thing called jury duty. Now, I've never been called for jury duty. That's just funny because, you know, wife always talk about we've never been called for jury duty and things like that uh, yet. I know a lot of people haven't been called yet. But throughout the nation, there's jury duty. And I was thinking, if you have these evangelicals, as I have in my nose, evangelicals and leaders, as you, all of these people that's on the thumbnail or anybody and, and millions of other Christians, any of them to be called to jury duty. And if they've answered yes to the big lie, yes to voting for Trump in the primary, knowing that he's got cases pending and that he needs to face justice just like everybody else, you know what? I thought about this. I said, you know what? These people are unfit to serve on a jury. I said, this is scary that these folks that think like this, that our entire judicial system is in jeopardy. So, I mean, so the democracy all around us is crumbling because these Christians, the evangelicals have lifted up this man and allowed this to take part. So this big lie, even for the people that not even the Christians and things, you don't want none of these people that on a jury, you don't want people. Look at this lady right here. This lady right here is a physician. She punched the officer, capital officer and stuff in the face and fighting them and end up being sent to prison and lost her law license. You've got people that's lost their livelihood, lost everything because of a lie, because of this man. And the devil, as I say, the devil is laughing it up. Churches and families being torn apart because of one man. And I was thinking that all of the people that sets on juries, if you end up, and what I have on here, yeah, if you, I says, if you won't want to preserve the rule of law, you, it says, what is it? Who will preserve the rule of law? Lose the rule of law, we lose our freedom. Are you willing to give up freedom because you don't like a person's and the way they make their choices or decisions? And, 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 you know, if you believe, yeah, and I have on here, and Kamala is the only one. She's the only one running. She's the only one. So that's the argument. I mean, she's the only one that, and we're going to get into that. You have no other choice. The MAGA has to be defeated and annihilated. All of them from top to bottom in every district, wherever, any election denier, anybody that's in the places of authority in our government has to be removed in order for there to be some type of normalcy within our society again. Because now you have people. Could you imagine you have a loved one or somebody setting accused of murder or something? Let's just think of it that way. Accused of a heinous crime. And you've got people that are unable, evangelicals or somebody that's unsaved, unable to use you know, this logical judgment and logical sense setting on a jury and their, your life is in the hands of somebody that can't think rational because they believe in the deepest, darkest conspiracies out there and they are part of on this jury. And if they don't respect the rule of law, they don't respect that the Supreme Court and all of the dozens and dozens of cases, and you had judges that was even appointed by Donald Trump to say, no, you do not have evidence that the, there's no evidence that the election was taken. But there's evidence that you tried to steal it. Just like you see here. He's a danger to our democracy. I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. There's nothing wrong with saying that you've recalculated. He is a danger to national security. I'm going to bomb the sh out of him. He is a danger to our safety. We are watching capital get defaced over a lie. We will never give up. We will never concede. I am your retribution. This is not like last time. A vote for Donald Trump may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good you're not going to have to vote.
The danger is real. In a historic decision, the Supreme Court ruled that presidents have immunity from prosecution. They've just given him a license for dictatorship. And, and you sit there, you see, and it's like, are you kidding me? So you have people that are, their lives are on the line in juries and things or situations or lawsuits or whatever. But you have evangelicals that are so concerned about forcing their ideology on the people that they want to get it any power in any kind of way they want. And if they're sitting on a, a jury with that mindset, they don't want to follow the law. They want to follow what they want. So you have people that are actually in danger in every courtroom. So I think that when they have the jury questions for as they poll in a jury and things like that, I mean, I don't, you know, you hope that someone will be honest, but do you believe that needs to be a question? Do you believe that the election of 2020 was stolen? Because if they believe that, they need to be immediately dismissed. And that's a concern. And it's even more of a concern, that, you know, that as well, because if you don't think that the rule of law applies to Donald Trump, that's a problem. Because then you're sitting there and you got these types of folks and evangelicals where, because they I've seen it in, in cases where people, uh, Christians, evangelicals have infiltrated a jury and knowing that they don't support the death penalty. But they've lied so that they can get on a jury case, a death penalty case, so they can go in there and mess it up. And is that fair to a family when the law is on the books and they may want that for the justice for their family member, whether we like it or not? Who do you think you are to try to twist scriptures and twist society into your liking? That's a problem. So we are in a dangerous, dangerous time spiritually and the church is in a dangerous time and in this i totally forgot the other thing as far as churches because if these people believe in the big lie or they voted for trump in the primaries you know what other thing i thought i totally forgot about it bylaws in the church that means they they, they don't follow so they, that means that because they they're, they're continuing to subscribe to trump and his madness that means as a pastors and leaders and all of these people they can't be trusted as a juror. How can they be trusted as a leader within a church, a leader in some type of position, Christian organization, if they believe a big lie that Trump's word is gold, despite everything, all the other from every judge and everything within society, they still believe that. So, the, you know, churches have bylaws, organized churches. You know, a lot of these these churches that you see out here that's on the internet, a lot of them have no accountability. They don't have no board. They can do what they want or whatever, but real churches will have a bylaws of some sort, some type of a uh, structure. So even if they end up in court or something, they've got something to go back to to show, you know, this business or that, you know, this, and you look it up for yourself. And it made me just think, as I close this out, there's a pastor that I knew years ago here. He had a small church. He tried to get a church, a, a larger church at one time, and they actually gave him the job. The board voted to give him the job. But guess what? Coming to find out, they found out before he was installed as pastor that he had been married four times. And he did not say anything about it. And they immediately voted to renege that offer. And oh, he was upset. He was so upset that he wanted to take them to court. He wanted to take them to court. How are you going to force a church to make you the pastor when they don't want you? But that's what he was going to do. And you see, and, and, and so thank, you know, God that that church stood up for what was right. And as you see, these people that we're talking about, that anybody with that mindset, how dangerous that is, because if they're, if they think like that, if they conduct themselves with this mindset like that, do you want them in leadership roles within the Christian realm? Uh, do, do you really want that? Do you want them sitting on a jury and somebody's situation or life is in their hands because they so warped in their thinking and their ways? See, that's a big problem. So we'll continue to talk more about it as we shine the light on this junk.
Shine the light on the issues the church run, uh, run away from. Shine the light on the devil and his sneaky little tactics and take them head on and punch a right up between the chops. Evangelism for God's channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.